powered cars and not sports cars. The fact they happen to do 208 miles an hour, it's just how we do things. Those are the words of Adrian Hallmark, CEO, chairman, and big boss man at Bentley Motors. And he should know, right? But if they're not sports cars, then sports cars should probably be a little bit worried right now because Bentley have just announced a new model that might have quite a few of them pretty worried. This is the new Bentley Continental GT Speed, the top model in the Continental lineup. It's built to provide just as much comfort as the current models, but also, as the name suggests, more speed, baby. I think that's what the kids on the internet are saying these days. I heard that on YouTube once. How have they done this? Well, it uses Bentley's most powerful engine, the six liter W12. But for this one, they've cranked it up. It's been tuned to make 569 PS. That's 24 PS more than the current GTW12. Torque is the same, 900 Newton meters, enough to peel the tarmac off the road. And that allows for 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds, 0 to 62 in 3.6 and 208 flat out. That's only a tenth quicker than the current version and only one mile an hour faster at the top end, but between 60 and 208 is where I'm expecting things to get pretty real. The thing with this engine is that it makes more power by delivering maximum boost pressure over a wider RPM spread. The boost pressure is essentially the same, but they keep it going for longer. So the higher you rev, the longer you hold those revs, then the more you're gonna feel that performance. You're also gonna feel a big difference in terms of the chassis and the handling. Major differences, in fact. But I'm gonna come to those in just a second. Before that, let's focus a little bit on the looks because, let's face it, we don't really care if it's faster. We just want people to know that it's faster just by looking at it. And you can tell that this one is the speed model because the radiator and lower bumper grills have a dark tint finish. There are speed badges on the side and you get new 22 inch speed wheels in either bright silver or dark tint gloss. Inside you also get illuminated Bentley tread plates on the sills and cow galore really. You've got a choice of 15 main and 11 secondary hide colors plus some Alcantara, notably on the steering wheel. If you want, the center console can be finished in a dark aluminium, which makes a nice aggressive change from the usual wood. Although if you want wood, no problem. They can chop down some trees, as many as you like, and whack it all in there. There's crown cut walnut, dark stained burr walnut, dark fiddleback eucalyptus. I don't know what any of these are, by the way, but they'll give you whatever tree you need. Now, let's get back to the chassis, because this is where the biggest changes are. For the first time ever in a Bentley, the GT Speed uses an electronic rear limited slip differential, which should give you better traction through the corners or help you skid. This is a very important one to keep an eye on because Bentley have never done this before in any of their cars, as far as I can remember. It's quite a step forward. They've also, on the Continental at least, never had all wheel steering but that's been introduced here too. And just like you get on the Flying Spur, the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction to the front wheels at low speeds for better maneuverability or in the same direction as the front wheels at higher speeds to help you with stability. You also get torque vectoring, which breaks the inside wheels in the middle of a corner to help the car rotate, plus 48 volt active anti-roll stabilization, which literally pushes down the outside wheels in a corner to help keep the body flat through the bend. So you've got four different things helping this car through the corners and also a quicker steering ratio. So it should feel much more agile, much more eager to turn in despite the fact that it weighs 2,200 kilograms. It even has a drift mode, but they don't call it a drift mode, but there is a mode in the traction control settings that will let the Continental GT Speed slide. This should be a real driver's car. When's it coming out? Well, it's gonna be available in Europe and in America by Q3 2021. The price hasn't been confirmed as yet, but I can tell you it'll be 20% more expensive than the current W12 Continental GT. So a jump from around 160 grand to maybe 190 grand-ish. That's a lot of cash, but also it's a lot of tech. That's it in a nutshell. A Continental with a bit more power and a shed load more chassis technology, but it's not a sports car. Whatever you say, Adrian. Let me know what you think in the comments below and stick around. Hopefully we'll get to actually drive this thing in the very near future. Hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.